Thank you very much. Hello, Tucson. I'm going to talk about the future of consciousness. I'm an anesthesiologist at UAMC. I take away patients' consciousness every day and bring it back. I've been obsessed with the problem of consciousness for almost 40 years studying it. I can tell you that consciousness is really the only thing that matters. If you don't have consciousness, you don't have anything. Now we want pleasure, pleasurable consciousness, spiritual, wonderful consciousness. We don't want bad vibe consciousness. But if you don't have consciousness at all, you ain't got nothing. Now, being means phenomenal awareness, having experience, having uh, a, a experiential sensation, could, uh, colors, taste, love, feeling, joy, pain. But it's different than having a subconscious or non-conscious behavioral response. <clears throat> Can conscious, everybody wants to know, wants to know the answer to this question. Can consciousness exist outside the body after death? What happens when we die? Is it possible that our soul can leave the body? Is it possible that consciousness being can exist outside the body? We've certainly heard many, many anecdotal stories. Can consciousness be downloaded to a computer? We hear a lot of stories about that too, although it's all speculation. Can the substance of the brain of the mind be downloaded into a computer so when our bodies are about to give out, we can transfer and be conscious indefinitely? It's not living forever, it's being conscious forever that people might be after, if, if that's a good idea. Now, there are a lot of people claiming this. Ray Kurzweil, a, a famous AI guy, his singularity is the point he projects when computers will equal the brain and we'll be able to download our consciousness into a computer. I don't think so. But some people do. The mate in the matrix uh, consciousness within a uh, computer system, there's uh, Bing. Uh, maybe consciousness could be transferred into an avatar, as in this movie, Bing. <clears throat> but the answer to these questions are, it depends on how the brain produces consciousness, which is an age-old question. We take it for granted, we open our eyes, and Bing happens. We see the world in front of us. This has been studied by neuroscientists. We go around the clock. We see many, many different disciplines, including an anesthesiologist who looks suspiciously like me, if you can see him, meditators, philosophers, psychiatrists, physicists, artists, computer scientists. Most, computer, most people would say, scientists would say, that the brain is a computer in which nerve cells, neurons, and synapses act like bits and switches in a computer. However, in Eastern philosophy, consciousness pervades a deeper level of reality. Bing is everywhere. Now, let's take the scientific view for a second. The so-called scientific, I think this is a pseudo-scientific view that consciousness uh, emerges from this type of processing because if we have inputs and outputs in a little network like this, we get all kinds of behavioral and cognitive responses, but there's really no reason to suspect, suspect that there's any consciousness. Where's consciousness? Where's the Bing? Why would it come out of a computer? There's really no reason to suspect that that's true. It's kind of a default position. For example, the idea there is that each neuron is simple. It's an on-off state, a switch, a bit, a one or a zero. But if we take a single cell creature like a paramecium, it swims around, it finds food, it avoids obstacles, predators. It finds uh, a mate and has sex. This is an X-rated slide. There are two, two paramecium <laughs> over there having sex. Maybe they're conscious, I don't know. <clears throat> I think the answer is to go to a finer scale, going deeper into the neuron, not just looking at the membrane, and, but at, at finer level, deeper level structures called microtubules inside neurons. Now we know about microtubules because when they fall apart, you get Alzheimer's disease. Everybody talks about the beta amyloid plaques, but the problem really is inside the neuron where the microtubules fall apart and you lose cognition, you lose memory, and eventually consciousness, but it's usually memory for quite a while. Now, I've been studying these structures called microtubules for almost 40 years and came up with the idea in the 70s and 80s that they act like computers, process information at a much, much finer level scale, that each protein can be a bit or an on-off state. And if you look inside a neuron, we have all this structure and we see these microtubules which look actually like an ear of corn that we heard about earlier and can process information. So there's a whole other level of information processing going on inside the neuron at a deeper level. And this is where I think uh, consciousness emanates from. Uh, these microtubules can store uh, memory uh, from the synapse in these hexagonal patterns. And we take it to a, a level further to the individual subunits of the microtubule protein. And the, in the yellow band, you see the red dots are where anesthetics act to block consciousness. And these dipoles uh, flip back and forth to register states, 
to give rise to functioning, eventually leading to consciousness. Now these uh, dipoles are down at the level of individual electron clouds. They're quantum level forces. And quantum gets us into a whole other uh, realm, literally. So here's more about the dipoles in the, in the tubulin, and uh, we've suggested that these uh, projections around the microtubules can correlate or actually represent or actually be emotional feelings and so forth. <clears throat> now, quantum, if you go down in scale, you get to uh, a level where everything changes. Uh, we really live in, in a world with two separate sets of, of physical laws. At the small level, we get into the quantum realm, and, and it's one world, so I put it on this yin-yang type of uh, <clears throat> arrangement where quantum and classical are the two, two portions of the yin-yang. Now, in the, quant in the classical world that we're familiar with, because that's where we, we perceive and exist, uh, classical, uh, everything's localized, particle-like, and fairly large. In the quantum realm, not only is it small, but things can be in multiple places at the same time. That's called superposition. Non-local, spread out, connected over distance, coherent, entangled, wave-like. Uh, that's the quantum world, and the boundary between the two has something to do with consciousness. Now, as we get into the quantum world, we go down and down and down in scale, and we get into the fine structure of space-time geometry of the universe. And as you go down in scale, eventually you reach the basement. It's called the Planck scale at the very bottom. And there's information there. Uh, it, could be, uh, it, it could be quantum geometry, it, it could be strings, nobody really knows. But the point is there's information, and Roger Penrose has suggested that platonic information is embedded there. Some people say the, the cosmic wisdom of the universe is embedded at this most fundamental level, at the tiniest level of the universe. Now, <clears throat> some people have observed that the quantum classical divide is the same as mind-matter, with mind being very uh, quantum-like and matter uh, material or classical. Uh, quantum being spirit-like, uh, classical being material. And uh, Penrose suggested that essentially consciousness uh, is on the boundary, is a process on the edge between quantum and classical worlds. And spiritual traditions like Kabbalah claim that consciousness dances on the edge between two worlds. It could be between the quantum and classical worlds. Penrose and I developed a theory uh, a number of years ago in the mid-90s, very controversial, uh, highly criticized, but still uh, doing very well and holding up uh, with more and more experiments that there's quantum computation going on inside microtubules, inside neurons. Uh, here we are in 1994 after the first Tucson conference that's uh, Roger in the yellow shirt, me about to follow the Grand Canyon, uh, David Chalmers on the far left. And uh, here we are more recently, uh, two years ago in, in Sweden. So the basic idea is that uh, quantum computations reach a threshold for consciousness. There's a bing, there's a bing moment. And you can have a sequence of bing moments, of conscious moments. At a higher frequency, you can become more intense. At slower frequency, uh, it's, it's not as intense. So it's kind of like photons. It's kind of like moments of consciousness, very much like the philosopher Whitehead. And <clears throat> it connects to a deeper level in space-time geometry, as we see at the bottom. Now, I'm running through these quickly, uh, obviously, but the, the basic idea is that the quality of the rose, the redness of the rose, is a pattern in space-time geometry which is reproduced in her, uh, in her brain uh, by virtue of this mechanism that connects our brain to fundamental space-time geometry. So the idea is that as, as consciousness can actually go down in this hierarchical level, it's like a fractal going down a deeper level, higher intensity, uh, faster frequency, very much like the Beatles song, the deeper you go, the higher you fly, the higher you fly, the deeper you go. As you meditate or become uh, um, enlightened or whatever, uh, more conscious moments per second, and it's occurring at a deeper, deeper level of the universe. This is what I would call enlightenment. So, you want immortality. Let's go back to the question at the beginning. I think there are three choices. You can wait or hope for downloading into a computer, uh, as I showed earlier. Uh, uh, maybe believe this guy, Ray Kurzweil. I don't. I think, uh, I think the premise and, and the, uh, the basic uh, assumptions that they make of one neuron, one bit are completely wrong. And I keep telling Ray, you should simulate a paramecium before you simulate uh, a brain. <laughs> or you could wait or hope for downloading uh, consciousness into a bio biological array of microtubules, as I suggested in a book I wrote in 1987. Uh, that uh, we could download our minds into uh, these centriole type structures where bing would occur, maybe even giant ones uh, floating uh, in zero gravity so that they could rotate. Or wait or hope for the old fashioned way. Because I think consciousness can actually exist in fundamental space time geometry 
And so we may not need to download it. It's kind of a spiritual idea, but I think there's a scientific rationale for believing that this actually occurs. So I think Bing goes all the way down. And in conclusion, let me just say that consciousness in the brain cannot be explained by modern science, uh, by conventional approaches. Uh, so they can't really say, well, that's silly to think that it can exist out of the brain, because they don't know. And quantum effects may connect brain activity to the most basic level of the universe. And finally, consciousness may indeed exist non-locally, independent of biology, perhaps at greater depth, intensity, and being. Thank you very much. Thank you.